Islam has strongly emphasized the fact and the aspect of decency and modesty in the, in the interaction between members of the opposite sect. Thus, dress code is the most crucial part of that overall teaching. There are numerous verses within the Holy Quran which in Allah subhanahu which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the issue of decency and hijab. This is why my esteemed guest and I have dedicated tonight's episode to examine the aspect of hijab in light of the Holy Quran. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the eighth episode of Life from Karbala, Ramadan series with me, your host Ahmed Ali. The past seven episodes entailed deep examination of the most controversial topics within the Holy Quran. These topics were discussed and examined with my dear guest, Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini, who has joined me once again in tonight's episode. So, let's welcome. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, the past, yesterday's episode, as well as uh, the episodes before, uh, we came to precise conclusions regarding uh, the topics that we've chosen, uh, which are somewhat the most controversial topics uh, that you know Muslims face or, or, or go through or that has been debated uh, on TV. Uh, but many claim that the concept of covering oneself is oppressive for females due to the fact that it reduces their social life. And as, as a result, it just makes them as an outcast. But what are people missing from this picture? I mean, first, it's important to break it down and see what hijab actually means and what does it signify and how relevant is hijab today. And we have to uh, compare between the fashion hijab and the actual hijab that uh, the Quran commands us with. Ahsantum. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعليه الطيبين الطاهرين حجاب is one of those topics that remains very relevant till today yes and is uh, still misunderstood mm -hmm. misunderstood not just by non-muslims but even by some muslims muslims yeah now why are we restricting women their clothing mm -hmm. uh, in a in a specific attire they mm. have to put a headscarf cover the entire exaggerated body exaggerated attire i'm sorry exaggerated attire is uh, it safe to say that no 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 it's not necessarily exaggerated of but course there's d there's different kinds mm -hmm. there's different kinds uh of of hijab attire yes maybe to some degree some is over exaggerated or over cautious mm -hmm. maybe some kinds but we're talking about hijab in itself. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, they still don't get the idea of hijab and that mm -hmm. it, why, why are we putting limits and restrictions on females? Mm -hmm. The way I see hijab is that it is completely the opposite. We are not putting restrictions. Really? Islam is not putting restrictions on women. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's lifting restrictions. Look at the West today. Mm -hmm. Look at how women are treated in the West. In an ordinary job, mm -hmm. if a woman has certain credentials, that's, that's a different topic. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't have a lot of credentials and she applies for a job, two females apply for a job, mm -hmm. they have equal credentials. Or, or maybe the one who is not as good looking or the one that's better dressed mm -hmm. or know, less dressed less dressed is the right word to you most likely she lo, most likely she'll get the job mm -hmm. if the business is run by a man or it's male dominated how many women are are exploited in the west many. for their looks many for their beauty a lot of jobs women receive mm -hmm. based on their looks TV anchors, yes. TV presenters, uh, even shop owners. If they get two, two females who are applying, one of them is prettier than the other and dresses better or, or dresses less. less than the other, she'll most likely to get the, job. get the job. Why? Because the job owner thinks that this sort of, uh, 
you know, this, this sort of employee will draw mm -hmm. more customers, will draw more f male customers, mm -hmm. and he'll get his business running. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in the West, female beauty is exploited. A woman's body is exploited. Her clothing is exploited. Her mm -hmm. body is exploited. Islam says no. There's, a, there's no exploitation. Men and women are dressed equally. Mm -hmm. We will let a woman cover so that you cannot exploit her beauty. She'll be, she will be treated equally like a man. Look at her credentials. Mm -hmm. Don't look at her beauty. Mm -hmm. Don't look at how she's dressed. Islam says, I will take away attention from how she dresses, mm -hmm. how she looks, so that she's not objectified, so, so that she's not taken as an object, she's not used. Rather, judge her based upon her credentials. But does it not also raise uh, or you know, make restrictions upon the one wearing a hijab? Because what if a woman wears a hijab and applies for a job and yet the other one doesn't? This, isn't that a restriction? Of course it's a restriction. Everything, everything is a restriction. Mm -hmm. uh, everything in life is a restriction. Whether you abide by religion or you abide by the law, there's a restriction. You see, hijab in one way, it, it gives more respect to women. It takes away the exploitation mm -hmm. that she will not be used. Definitely. She will not be used for her beauty on uh, commercials, magazines, on TV, in movies. How much are women degraded in the West? And they're, and they're exploited. And how many women allow themselves to be exploited and degraded and disrespected for a little bit of money mm -hmm. to, to, to sell themselves, sell their beauty? Islam says, no, none of this. A woman should be respected. Do not exploit her, her beauty or the way she looks. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is very important. Two, Islam teaches modesty and akhlaq. That if women were allowed to, uh, to dress whatever they'd like, you know, there'd be chaos. And everyone agrees on this. Proof of that, you know, everyone accepts the concept of hijab. Mm -hmm. Ask me how. How? In the West, mm -hmm. can a female walk around outside naked, nude? No. No. She has to cover. Yes. That is hijab. That is hijab. Because they also agree with us that a female cannot walk out in the street naked and nude. She has to cover. And we also say she has to cover. But, but our disagreement is on how much does she need to it's cover. It's 99.9% .9 nude. What are they covering? How is that? That's fine, but there is some covering. So there's a restriction. There is know. a restriction. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday we said, uh, Let's talk about common ground. <laughs> common ground. What we have in common. We tell the West that we, we, we have something we in have common. Something in you common. put restrictions on women and men, mm -hmm. and we put restrictions, but it's, it's, it's about how, many, how much restrictions. Mm -hmm. You say that females just have to cover, you know, Certain private parts. parts and that's it. Mm -hmm. We say that a female has to cover all of her body. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in Islam, her entire body is considered private. Her entire pro body is considered private. Private property, no one can go Private that. property and private parts. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about this later. Why, why are we emphasizing on females mm -hmm. and not males? Because men are aroused by their eyes, mm -hmm. by what they see. Men are immediately aroused by what they see. That's why a female has to cover. That's why a man doesn't have to cover. He has to cover, but he doesn't have to cover like a female. As much. As much. Why? Because females are not aroused, aroused like men mm -hmm. by sight. They are but not like men, not to the degree of men. Of course, women are also aroused by sight and by looks, but not like men. Men are on a different level. So to keep modesty, to keep things in order, so that there's no chaos, Islam has enforced hijab on women. Ask many young ladies mm -hmm. today, those that wear hijab, mm -hmm. Ask them to take off their hijab, and they wouldn't. Even, for example, for example, right now, if, you know, let's pretend something that 
will not happen, but let's pretend it could happen. Let's pretend that right now Allah could issue a, a law stating that hijab is no longer mandatory. Believe wow. me, a lot of young ladies will still not take off their hijab. But is it not a command? No. If, if, a, if a command comes and says, or a decree says that women do not need to wear their hijab, huh, not, not that they should take it off. Mm -hmm. They don't need to t wear it any longer. You will still find that many young ladies will, will keep their hijab on. Definitely. Because hijab is not just something mandatory to do or not to do. It's a source of modesty. It's a, sort of, it's a, it's a source of modesty, respect, chastity. Mm -hmm. It's a way of life. Definitely. It's, it's about the respect that she gives herself. You know, how much do you respect yourself? You'll get others to respect you. Mm -hmm. If you don't respect yourself, if you have no respect for yourself, don't, don't expect anyone to, to have respect for you. You know, I see some females, they barely cover, and they expect people to you know, have respect. Have respect for, you don't have respect for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're showing your entire body. And you want people to respect you? For what? If you don't have respect for yourself. Definitely. Who's going to respect you? So hijab is definitely still relevant. Mm -hmm. Till today Hijab is not something that is 14 centuries ago Hijab is still revel relevant today Because Human nature hasn't changed Technology has changed Many things have changed But humans haven't changed The issues of chastity And modesty and respect It still remains In fact we are more in need of hijab today mm -hmm. Because previously, when there was no technology, means of exploiting women were not that much. Today, now that we have the internet, we have social networking sites, we have magazines, we have TV, we have Hollywood, women are more exploited mm -hmm. than the past. Mm -hmm. So hijab is definitely relevant today and maybe even more relevant than the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now that we've mentioned that um, we... I would like to talk about the fashion hijab versus the Islamic hijab. I mean, we do see uh, the various types of hijab. I mean, you have the Mickey Mouse hijab or the yo-yo hijab or the convertible hijab. You know what I mean? Uh, so they're actually funny. And, uh, you know, uh, t just to be humorous, I mean, uh, one time we were sitting in a gathering and uh, especially in Islamic events, you'll see the convertible hijabs. Mm. You might ask, what is the convertible hijab? The convertible hijab is when a, you know, a, qari, a, a reciter, Quran reciter, goes up to read Quran. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim The convertible hijab comes up, they cover. It starts raining. Sadaqallah <laughs> al-Ali al the hijab comes down. The sun comes it's, down. It's, it's like, Sadaqallah al-Ali al is translated to them as, oh sisters, it's okay not to take off your hijab. So we do see that. So, I mean, Fashion hijab versus Islamic hijab. Yeah. Well, a lot of our young sisters, they they wear hijab, but uh, at the same time, they try to make it fashionable. Mm -hmm. I understand where they're coming from. I understand where they're coming from. They don't want to take off their hijab, but at the same time, they want to look fashionable. Mm -hmm. You know, they say we're young. I don't want to look like my grandmother. Uh -huh. I, I want to look relevant. It's 2016. Yes. When I go to work, when I go to school, yeah. I want to look presentable. That's fine. That's fine. Look presentable. However, don't defeat the purpose of your hijab. Yeah. Don't fe defeat the purpose of your hijab. There are some young ladies, some of our young sisters, the way they put on the hijab and the makeup that comes with it and the, and the tight clothing, and it might bring her more attention if she doesn't wear hijab. That sort of hijab brings her even more attention. My message to these young ladies is that think about what is the purpose of hijab. Mm -hmm. The purpose of hijab is to draw attention away from your looks. Don't look so provocative. To respect yourself. To draw away attention from your looks and bring more attention to your credentials, mm -hmm. what you have to achieve, your faith, your akhlaq, to be judged according to your merits, not to your looks. Yes. So when you wear hijab, but you wear it fashionably, you're defeating the purpose. You haven't done anything. You haven't done anything. 
Am I saying that they should take off their hijab? No. Don't take your hijab. Definitely not. But improve your hijab. Yes. But improve your hijab. Mm -hmm. And I think that some of these sisters, they, they have it in them to improve it because they haven't taken off their hijab. Mm -hmm. That's a good step. It is. They, they, they have not, they've decided not to take their hijab off. They just need to work better on that hijab, mm -hmm. on the makeup, on the tight clothing. And remember, mm -hmm. what is the philosophy of hijab? Yes. If they remember that, they'll be able to improve that convertible hijab or the all the other names <laughs> that you mentioned. Yes, uh, but uh, once I've see, uh, I seen a debate with a Muslim and a Muslim, one wearing a hijab, one not wearing a hijab. And um, this was actually a debate that was going on. It wasn't staged or anything. And the one that's wearing a hijab, she said something very beautifully. She says that Islam doesn't want a woman to sit in front of a mirror for hours fixing her hair, fixing her look. Instead, she should waste time on fixing her inner self and her, and her spirituality. And that's the key. That's not I, wasting time. That's, that's, th th that's, that's not time, wasting time well spent. Definitely. And, but now I would like to move on to something that's also somewhat controversial. Um, in chapter 24, uh, Surah An-Nur, uh, verse 30 and 31, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the males before the, meme, the, before the females to cast down their gaze and cover their private parts. So that is a similarity between us and the West, restriction on covering uh, the private parts. But this is somewhat uh, decreeing for the Muslim women or, or men because when someone is talking to you, lowering down your gaze, that's somewhat rude. I, I, I believe it's, it's somewhat rude. If I'm talking to you and you're looking down on your phone or looking down, that's considered as rude or lack of confidence. Mm. Is that actually true? Some say that the Quran does not order women to wear hijab. That's something else. Does this verse order women to wear hijab as we know it today or something different? I mean, covering from head to toe except face and hands. An, ex uh, an explanation of this verse, uh, of, of this verse uh, would be good, but... It depends on how people see it. I mean, how, how, how would you resolve this? Surah An nur verse 30 and 31. 30, 31. I have written down verse 31. Mm -hmm. I don't have verse 30 in front of me. Mm -hmm. But I believe it says, Ya uh, I'm sorry. Qul I apologize. Qul lil mu'mineen yaghuddu min afsadihim wa yahfadu furujahum. Thalika azka lahum. And then, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضُنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ To answer your first question, that why does uh, the Qur'an tell us to lower our gaze? Isn't that disrespectful? Isn't that offensive? The verse doesn't say lower your gaze. This is a common mistake that many people... يَغْضُضُ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Yes, it doesn't mean lower your gaze. يَغْضُضُ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ it doesn't mean lower your gaze. It, it means do not stare. لا يحدق النظر As jurists say. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to put your head down. No, you can look at the female. But don't gaze. Don't stare. You could look at the female. But don't, you know, don't concentrate. Don't mm -hmm. zoom in, so to speak. Don't zoom in. Yeah. Look at very casual look. Mm -hmm. Just like you would look at a male. Just like you would look at a male. Somewhat hard. <laughs> it's somewhat hard, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. Just like, just like uh, you would look at a male, look at that female very casually, mm -hmm. uh, you know, without gazing, without concentrating. That's the point. It doesn't mean uh, lower your gaze. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, men and women have to walk in the streets with their heads with down. Their heads down. That's not possible. Mm -hmm. this, this is not what Islam is trying to Definitely. ask for means don't gaze. You know, when some people, they keep on staring. Yeah, we see that. They stare, they gaze. Uh, it's not just one or two looks. This is what Islam is trying to say. Mm -hmm. Be casual. Be normal. Look just like you're looking at your sister. Mm -hmm. Just like you're looking at your brother, at your mother. At, but don't, don't take it further than that. This is what the Quran is trying to mm -hmm. say. So this is one. And then, this is the point. Verse 31. Some people, many people actually, they say that hijab is not in the Quran. Mm -hmm. 
where does it say in the Quran that hijab exists? Where? A lot of people say that it's you, you scholars, they, you made this up. This is for female subjugation. You're trying to keep your woman restricted mm -hmm. at home. Uh, it's because you live in a male-dominated society. You made up the concept of hijab because it's yes. not in scripture. Mm -hmm. It's not in the Holy Quran. And I've seen some speakers, they say this. Yeah, it's unfortunate. That hijab is not mandatory. Hijab is not in the Quran. Hijab was a custom. It was, a, it was customary. Before Islam. Before Islam. It was cultural. Hijab is cultural. It's not religious. Because, this is the, the, this is the point that they emphasize on. Because the Quran does not explicitly mention hijab, anything that we believe in or practice has to be mentioned explicitly in the Quran. Where is hijab in the Quran? You might find a couple of narrations and you'll find scholars talking about hijab, but it's not in the Quran. Is this true? Is it true? Come with me to Surah An Nur, verse 31. Let's find out. Mm -hmm. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل للمؤمنات يغضضن من أبصارهن tell the females tell the believe, believing females not to gaze as well just, just like yes. the men we asked men not to gaze and not to stare not to lower their gaze but to uh, not to stare so to the female believers ask them not to ويحفظن فروجهن and to protect their chastity Furujahun doesn't necessarily mean private parts. It's a, it's a metaphoric expression. Hmm. It's trying to say, let them protect their chastity. Let them protect their modesty. Then the verse begins. And do not let them show their ornaments except that which is showing. Scholars here, they said, what is the verse talking about? Mm -hmm. Zina, ornaments. Makeup. No. No? The verse is talking about jewelry. Oh. Do not let them show their jewelry. Hmm. Do not let them show their jewelry. That, that doesn't make sense. If a woman wants to show her jewelry, she wants to sell her jewelry, she can't show her jewelry. Huh. Scholars said the Quran is being polite. The Quran wants to say the place of their jewelry. Mm -hmm. Where do women wear jewelry? Let them protect the places of jewelry. Not the jewelry itself. A woman has a, a bracelet made out of gold. Is it haram for her to show? No. What's the, what's the harm in showing a gold bracelet? No, the, the place of the jewelry. Mm -hmm. The place where she wears jewelry. Meaning her neck. Her ears. Meaning her ears. Meaning her wrists. What about nose? Nose piercing. Yes. Yes, that's a, that's a problem. Putting on a nor nose ring, that's, that's ornament. Mm -hmm. That's not allowed. Makeup, that's not allowed. Because that's zina. Mm -hmm. that, that's all considered zina. Some scholars said, yeah, th these, these are the possibilities. Do not show your ornaments, meaning your jewelry. The second possibility is do not show the place of your ornaments. The third means do not show the place that has the jewelry, mm -hmm. that has the ornaments. So if you're wearing a necklace, don't show it. But most likely, the verse definitely doesn't mean the first meaning, which is just don't show your jewelry. It means do not show the places of jewelry. Your neck, your ears, your hands. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can't show your ears and neck, can you show your head? Can you show your chest? Mm -hmm. Can you show anywhere below the chest? Of course not. Of course if not. If you can't show your neck and your chest, and you can't show your ears, and you can't show your neck, this area, of course you can't show your head and you can't show anything below than that. Mm -hmm. But in case there's some confusion, mm -hmm. let's see what the verse, rest of the verse says. Mm -hmm. Can we do Take that a after break? the break, inshallah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for, very much, Sayyidina. Uh, respected viewers, uh, we have came to the conclusion of the first part of the episode. We're going to go into a short break. 
uh, and come back to you shortly, inshallah. So stay tuned. Sisters, once again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the second part of the episode. Uh, before the break, we talked about uh, what hijab is and uh, what is so significant about hijab and uh, how hijab is relevant in our times today. Uh, but back to the discussion with my dear guest, Sid Hussain Qazwini. Welcome back. How are you, Sayyidina? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, Sayyidina, after talking about the hijab of the eyes, uh, we came to the hijab of the body and covering the body. Before the break, you were mentioning uh, the verse from uh, 31st verse uh, from chapter 24, I believe. That's right. Uh, about regarding uh, the hijab of right. the woman and what, what, what she should cover. The verse stating, وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا We're explaining the word zina. Zina, which literally means ornaments, which is understood to mean jewelry. Mm -hmm. They should not show their jewelry. Mm -hmm. But we said this doesn't make sense. Do not show their jewelry. Scholars said the verse is trying to say do not show the place of their jewelry. Mm -hmm. Meaning their necks, their wrists, their ears. إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا What scholars are understanding from this verse is that وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا Of course, we need the help of the Ahlul Bayt to help us understand uh, these narrations. Because Absolutely. the verse literally is saying, and do not show your beauty or your ornaments unless that which is showing from them. What is showing from them? Do not show your ornaments unless that which is already showing. Scholars say that that means only the face and hands. This is the only part that shows. Mm -hmm. And this is beauty as well. Mm -hmm. A female, a uh, female's face is considered beauty. What it's about the ornament? Ring? What about a ring? No. No. You can't wear it. No, because wala yubdina zina tahunna. Really? Yes. What about wedding ring, engagement ring? No. Really? This is jewelry. Wala yubdina zina tahunna. Wala yubdina zina zina tahunna includes their jewelry and the places of their jewelry. She can show her wedding ring as long as it's off. But once it's on, you know, and when, when you see a hand that has a ring on it, female hand, mm -hmm. it looks prettier. But doesn't matter. It's more attractive. It's, it's a good thing, though, in our societies. That means men can't hit on her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> men shouldn't be hitting on the woman regardless. Yeah. Whether she has a ring or she doesn't have a ring. But when she has a ring on, that's more attractive. I don't know if you agree with me on this one, mm -hmm. but a woman looks more attractive with a ring on her hand, whether it's a wedding ring or not a wedding ring. And the verse is very clear. Lest that which is already showing, mm -hmm. scholars say the face and the hands, those are already showing. That she doesn't need to cover. Otherwise, a woman, her entire body is an ornament. Her entire body is beauty. Thus, it all needs to be covered. Mm -hmm. If that is a bit vague, come with me to the second, second part. Mm -hmm. At the end, we could put these sections all together. That's if hopeful. this is not that clear, that's not that clear. Once we finish, you'll get the bigger picture. Hopefully. 
وليضربن بخمرهن على جيوبهن خمر is not alcohol it's not wine yeah that's khamr that's khamr yeah khamr is a headscarf it's a headscarf the quran says and let them bring their headscarves over their bosoms this shows that even before islam women would wear headscarves mm -hmm. they had headscarves islam was not the first religion to introduce headscarves they would wear headscarves mm -hmm. However, the headscarves worn by women in the Arabian Peninsula mm -hmm. was that she would bring her headscarf and then bring it behind her ears and on her back. Yeah, with her neck and ears showing. Her, her, her ears and neck showing. Mickey Mouse her job. <laughs> today in some cultures, mm -hmm. today in some cultures, you see that kind of hijab. Yeah. They only cover the head. Mm -hmm. And the, and the hair, but the ears and the neck are showing. This is how an Arabian, Arabian woman, this is how they would wear their hijab. Mm -hmm. How do we know this? Because the Quran says, And let them bring their headscarves. Meaning they already wore headscarves, but let them bring them on their bosom. Let mm -hmm. them cover their bosoms with their headscarf. But the Quran says, doesn't say let them wear headscarves. Mm -hmm. Let them bring it. Let them bring it and cover their bosoms with mm -hmm. their headscarves. There's a big difference. This shows that women were already wearing headscarves. Mm -hmm. Islam didn't come and bring something new. It was already worn. It was already worn. But Islam says instead of bring it, bringing it on your back, bring your headscarf to the front. Cover your. Now when you bring your headscarf to the front, that means you're going to cover your ears. And when you cover your bosom, that means you're going to cover your neck and your chest. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a hijab. That's a hijab. But how did you or the scholars or the jurists derive hijab from khumr? In the Arab, in the Arabic language, khumr means that which covers the head. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows this in the Arabic language. Mm -hmm. So we, you want to call it hijab? You want to call it khumr? You, you want to call it anything else? That's another story. But khumr in the Arabic language is that which covers the head. Yes. That's for females, not for men. Not for men. Anything that covers the head of a woman is called khumr. Yes. But it's long. It's not like a hat. Mm -hmm. It's a long headscarf. That is called khumr. Yes. The Quran says, وَلِيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُرَهِنَّ عَلَى جيوبهن. So there, you have the head covered. Just from this section of the verse. The head is covered. The neck is covered. The ears are covered and the bosoms are covered. The chest is covered. Mm -hmm. Now, if the Quran is ordering women to cover all of that, some might say, but the Quran doesn't say women can't wear shorts. The Quran is not saying women can't wear short sleeve mm -hmm. shirts. That's true. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It doesn't. But logically, Logically, mm -hmm. if the Quran is saying cover your he head and let your headscarves cover your neck and ears and bosoms with that same God who revealed this verse, would he be satisfied with a woman who's covering all of that but have her wear shorts or have her wear short sleeves? But they have a point, it's not mentioned. It's not mentioned, but it's a given. It's a given. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that uh, a man had a, had a slave mm -hmm. who would take his words literally. So he went to the masjid with his slave and he prayed. He had a sajada, a prayer mat. He forgot the prayer mat inside the masjid. He, he came outside. When he was about to arrive home, he remembered that he forgot his prayer mat. He told his slave or a servant, he said, go, go in the masjid and check, is my prayer mat still there? He went and he came back empty-handed. Told him, what happened? He said, yeah, your prayer mat is still there. I checked and came back. He said, yeah, I checked and it's still there. Told him, why, did you, why didn't you bring it? He said, you didn't tell me to bring it. You just said, check if it's there or not. No, that was a stupid slave. <laughs> he doesn't have to say it. Some things are given. It's obvious. 
It's obvious when the Quran is saying, let and cover your, let with your headscarves, cover your bosoms. You're covering half of your body mm -hmm. with that headscarf. Mm -hmm. Now, Islam does, does Islam have to say, don't wear shorts or don't wear short sleeves? Mm -hmm. This is one. So it's already a given. Two, at the time of the revelation, women were not showing their feet anyway. They weren't showing their feet. They weren't showing their legs, I'm sorry, not their feet. They weren't showing, the, meaning they weren't wearing shorts. They weren't wearing short sleeves. Read about history during the days of Jahiliyyah and women at the time. We don't read about, you know, women that were revealing. This idea of revealing their bodies, this is new. This was introduced in Europe in the later centuries. Previously, women would cover. But the headscarf would go on the back. It wouldn't cover the neck. It wouldn't cover the, the ears. It wouldn't cover the, the bosom. The bosom is right here. The higher the chest. chest and the neck. The higher chest and the neck. That had to be covered up. The rest was already covered. Mm -hmm. So Islam started from where they were already at. Islam didn't have to come and start from the scratch and say cover Cover everything because a lot of the body was already covered. Yes. So we have to think of the context. Right? And then again, and they should not show their beauty. Again. A part of Zina wouldn't be makeup. I mean, some girls or women yes. say that f foundation or concealing or concealer is that considered as makeup? Is that haram or halal? We're going to just beauty, but it's, it's good to input that. If it's beautification, yes. If it's considered zina, yes. But if, if it's concealing, I get this question it's, a lot. It's, it's just huh. concealing what, you know, so, some errors in the face. So it's not beautification? Well, it's somewhat beautiful. See, there's two types the of makeup. There's two types of makeup. One that removes the, the, what do you call it? What's the right word? You know, if there's a scar or there's... There's a black spot or something. It removes that, mm -hmm. but it makes you look normal. And there is makeup that's oh. mascara and so normal. Normal is the line. That's not beautification. Okay. That's not considered zina. Okay. I don't know. You would have to ask people in general: Is this considered zina or not zina? That's not our job to say mm -hmm. what is zina or not zina. Our job is to explain the Quran. The Quran says zina is not allowed for females. Wearing zina. Period. Period. That is for people, for urf, to decide what is zina, what is not zina. That foundation, foundation makeup, is it beautification or is it not beautification? Is it zina or not zina? That's another story. Mm -hmm. طيب. And they should not show their beautification except their husbands. Uh, their fathers their father-in-laws their sons oh females or um, slaves slaves or I believe that this section means uh, old men that have lost desire who you know I don't know is that possible I don't know if that's possible I don't know if that's possible because there's a 30 year old person who's, who's yes who got married to a 19 year old person yes uh, those who have lost their you know their, their, their desire appetite. their appetite and couldn't make a difference between a 50 year old or a 70 year old or a 18 year old if that's possible right I will tifl or children, small boys, young children that, you know, don't understand the difference between men and women. Or they do know the difference, but not the sexual difference. Yeah. And then the verse makes a very beautiful point. Mm -hmm. Previously, women would wear uh, leg bracelets. Yeah. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Bracelets on the neck. On the leg. Uh, I'm sorry, on the leg. On their heels. Not, not on, the, on their heels. On their heels. 
No, no, there, there's bracelets for, for the wrist, mm -hmm. and there's bracelets for, for the heels. And they would make noise. When they walk. When they walk, they make noise. The Quran says, don't, don't, even do that. don't stamp or don't stop. When you walk, walk slowly, gently. Don't make noise. Because when you make noise, you'll draw attention of the male. And when you draw his attention, that will turn him on. You know, mm -hmm. for females, that doesn't make sense. It's just it a noise. It's, it's just the noise, noise. Of, uh, of jewelry. Mm -hmm. But for men, it makes a, makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, the sound of high heels. I was just about to say that. The sound of high heels for some men, it's arousing. It is. That's, you know, some, some you know, maybe, maybe some females will say, men are so disgusting. Maybe. That's just how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. Allah created men in, in this sort of way mm -hmm. that are aroused in these sort of manners. And perhaps He did this so that men will, you know, continue the existence of human beings by, by reproducing. Yes. So He made their arousal very easy. Mm -hmm. While for females, does not make sense because they're not aroused the same way as females are. From this whole verse, don't we get the, you know, don't we understand, can't we conclude that the Quran is ordering us, ordering females mm -hmm. to veil yes. and cover from head to toe, except that which is already revealed, her face mm -hmm. and her hands. I, I think that the verse is very clear. It but is. if if there are some that you know they have an agenda and they're trying to reach the conclusion that hijab is not wajib, they'll they'll you know they'll they'll have loopholes mm -hmm. and they'll have you know they'll try to find problems in the verse and in, in the explanation of the verse. But I think if we look at the verse objectively, unbiasedly, trying to reach the truth, I think it's very clear. It is, it's, it's very clear. But I would like to, I think we have uh, four or three minutes left. Uh, I would like to combine two things together right now. Uh, in chapter 33, verse 53, uh, the Quranic verse states that if you ask them for something, ask them behind a divider or veil a piece of cloth a piece of wood a piece of metal a behind wall, the door behind the wall behind the wall um, does this mean uh, does this mean that men and women should be segregated and divided so no mixing up happens between them and also uh, regarding their voice and sitting you know together on, on a table or you know in a classroom or something like that um, because it does happen, especially in the West, uh, when you're sitting, you know, next to your, uh, you know, female classmate or male classmate, you know, doesn't that also raise this question? And also, if you can combine those together and conclude the episode uh, regarding the controversy, which will begin in a few minutes, uh, that mentioned that only peop people view that women are oppressed in Islam because hijab is enforced on them and not on men. So, is hijab enforced on men if you can combine those together? Sure. There are some verses that say, uh, and if you ask them, ask them from behind the divider, mm -hmm. which signifies that there should be a divider between men and women. Mm -hmm. another, verse, another verse says, uh, if you speak, speak softly. Don't soften your voice when speaking. Another, vo another verse says, sit at home. Sit at home, don't mm -hmm. leave your house. However, when we look at these verses, we see that they're all speaking about the wives of Rasulullah They're not general verses. Yeah. The verse says, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَاعًا فَسَأَلُهُنَّ مَنْ وَرَأِي حجاب. It's actually talking about the wives of Rasulullah. Because it does mention in that verse, the wives of yeah. Rasulullah. يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَدْخُلُوا بُيُوتَ النَّبِيِّ حتى yes. يُذَنْ O oh, you who believe, do not enter the house of the Prophet unless you're given permission. Uh, the verse is, you know, giving morals uh, about what, to, how to behave with Rasulullah yes. when entering his house, mm -hmm. eating from his food, speaking to his wives. So that divider should be between you and the wives of Rasulullah. 
not in general. Mm -hmm. As for the verse that speaks of softening the voice, mm -hmm. again, regarding the wives of Rasulullah. Ya Nisa and Nabi, lastunna ka'adim min an Nisa, and it taqaytunna fala takhwa'na bil qawl, fayatma'a alladhi fi qalbihi marad. O the wives of the Prophet, you are not like the, the other ladies, the other females. If you, if you are pious, do not soften your voice. When you soften your voice, someone who's, you know, who has sickness in his heart, meaning mm. he's... Extra hormones. Extra hormones, he'll, he'll be aroused, he'll be mm. attracted. This is speaking to the wives of Rasulullah. However, we understand from this verse that it's better for women not to soften their voice. Mm -hmm. There's no ban, but it's better not to soften their voice. You know, it's, some females, indeed, in front of others, in front of strangers, they'll tend to soften their voice. Mm -hmm. At home, they mm -hmm. speak normally, sometimes even roughly, but in front of men, they'll tend to... They're soft. They're soft. They t that's not good. Isn't that a female characteristic, though? To be soft in, in front of others? Yes, but there's a difference between being soft because it's your nature or being soft to, to seem more attractive. Mm -hmm. To seem more attractive. Yes. To make your, to make your voice more, more attractive. This is, this is what Islam is trying to get at, the Quran. Avoid that kind of voice that is attractive. I think females would know they, what they, I'm They what understand what, I mean. what that means. Right. And as for the verse that says, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُونَ وَلَا تَبَرَجُ الْجَهْلِ is also speaking about the wives of Rasulullah that sit at home. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, for other women, it doesn't, they don't have to sit at home. They don't have of to course, be in it's the better. Of course, we have narrations that say if a female does not need to go outside, it's better for her to stay at home. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't need to go outside, she shouldn't be walking out, outside. Mm -hmm. She's only gonna, going to be drawing negative attention. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's better for her to stay, if she could stay at home, let her stay at home. Mm -hmm. But does she have to? No, she doesn't no. have to. No, she doesn't have to. Perfect. Um, now that I'm, I'm not saying that I want to wear a hijab, but th there's a specific hijab for women and a specific hijab for men. Some people tend to overlook that fact and think that hijab is only for, uh, for females. Uh, we have approximately one minute left. If we can... One minute. Hij mention that. The Quran does not speak of hijab for men. doesn't? No. Uh, uh, the Quran tells men not to gaze, not to stare. They should not gaze and stare, mm -hmm. and they should protect their chastity and modesty. Yes. Do they have to wear hijab? Is there anything specific that they have to wear? The Quran doesn't say this. However, we have traditions that say a man should not dress provocatively. Mm -hmm. Does it have to cover from head to toe? No. No, but he doesn't need to. He shouldn't wear provocatively mm -hmm. a tight t-shirt, especially if he's muscular and he's trying to attract attention. He should avoid that. Okay, so thank you very much, Sayyidina, for uh, clearing up those uh, misconceptions. Pleasure. My pleasure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Uh, respected viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability uh, to wear the hijab properly. Uh, that's for everyone, male and female. Uh, so thank you very much for tuning in. If you didn't get the chance to view the full episode or the previous episode, you can log into our YouTube channel at Imam Hussain 3 TV. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Alaikum assalamu alaikum.